Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to AmoyDS HRD webinar. I'm Paul Huang, Senior Director of International Business for Amoy Diagnostics. In 2020, there were about 300,000 newly diagnosed ovarian cancer cases worldwide, accounting for almost one of four cancer cases among women. It represents the third most common gynecologic malignancy worldwide, but accounts for the highest mortality rate among these cancers with five-year survival rate of 45%. Hereditary and genetic factors, including a personal or family history of breast or ovarian cancer and inherited mutations like BRCA genes account for around 25% of ovarian cancer cases. Homologous recombination repair, HRR, is an important repair pathway for, N for NDA double strand damage. And BRCA gene is an important gene related to HRR function. A normal HRR function can lead to homologous recombination deficiency, HRD. Tumors with BRCA mutations usually appear to be sensitive to platinum and poppy therapies. However, with the deepening of research, BRCA gene mutation detection gradually cannot meet the existing clinical need. And the effective population of drugs enriched by BRCA gene mutation detection is relatively low. And some treatment beneficiaries will be missed. In the Paolo 1 study, it has been demonstrated that nearly half of the patients in this study were HRD positive. Therefore, with the detection of HRD status, the percentage of patients who may potentially benefit from puppy therapy will be significantly increased. That is really good news for ovarian cancer patients. However, the turnaround time with the most currently available HRD testing solution is quite long, and the testing material usually has to be sent out of the country to some reference labs. In early 2021, a MoDS HRD focus panel was launched, which is the first localized solution around the world for HRD testing. It detects broad commutation and determines a genomic scar score using DNA isolated from neutral FFP tissue samples. With the patented handle technology and the on-site server end system, the HRD testing time can be shortened from two, three weeks to less than one week. And the total cost is much lower than centralized testing in other countries. Today, I hope this, we hold this webinar in order to introduce you a MoDS HRD focus panel, which can enable local HRD testing for ovarian cancer patients. I'm glad to see that the attendees from over 40 countries joined the webinar today. Before handing over to my colleague, Dr. Matthias Mercer, I'll give you a very brief introduction to MoDS. Amoy Diagnostics is the pioneer and globally leading company in the field of molecular diagnostic for precision oncology, focusing on companion diagnostic product development and commercialization. A rich product portfolio has been established with dozens of products approved by China NMPA, EU Authority, Japan and PMDA, and et cetera. Currently, patients in over 60 countries are benefiting from AmoyDS products. With multiple technological platforms and full range of companion diagnostic products, AmoyDS has become an important diagnostic partner of many pharmaceutical companies over the globe. Later, my colleague Xiangyu will provide you more detailed information about AmoyDS and the products. Again, welcome to AmoyDS HRD webinar. I believe that through it, 
you will get valuable information about HRD diagnostic, diagnostic solution. Next, I would like to introduce you my colleague, Dr. Matthias Muser, our medical director, to moderate today's webinar. Matthias, please. Welcome again from my side. We have one hour and 20 minutes, and uh, I will just have the honor to moderate the meeting. And uh, we have two different topics. The first one is uh, uh, an introduction to our local NGS diagnostic solution for HRD determination in ovarian cancer patients. And the second will be a more example from practice of somebody who uses the test kit. And uh, not to lose more time, I would like to start with the first presentation, which is by my colleague Xiang Yu Rao, who is the Director of Business Development of Amoy Diagnostics. Please, Xiang Yu, can you present? Okay, great. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Xiang Yu Rao, uh, International BD Director from Amoy Diagnostics. And today I will introduce a innovative um, you know, HRD diagnostic method from MoDX, which could enable local HRD NGS diagnostics for the ovarian cancers who need uh, pub inhibitor therapies. So at the beginning, I will introduce more diagnostics as a company, and then uh, I will give a bit background of homologous recombination deficiency or HRD background. Uh, I will also introduce the pub inhibitor a little bit um, and then I will introduce our main products, Amoy DX HRD focus panel, followed by the main benefits and advantages of this solution. So Amoy Diagnostics was founded in 2008 in Shaman, China. So we are a R&D driven company. We have more than 1,000 employees worldwide, including more than 200 people working in the R&D department. Amoy DX is not only the, you know, the, the assay or case provider, we also work as a diagnostic service provider for precision oncology in China. We have two uh, central labs in China, one is in Shanghai, and another one is in our headquarters, Xiamen. Um, so regarding our service, but also kids portfolio, we cover uh, NGS, QPCR, IHC, digital PCR, but also fish. So currently, you know, Amoy, provides more than 600,000 tests per year for oncology diagnostics. Um, Amoy DX is quite dominant in China, so we cover uh, more than 400 top hospitals in China with more than 70% of market share. We also distributed our kits to more than 16 countries globally. For example, in Japan, we cover more than 200 hospitals or labs and in Europe, you could find our keys or assays in more than 200 hospitals or labs as well. Since uh, Amoy position itself as a critical players of you know, college diagnostics, so the partnership of the CDX with uh, you know, pharmaceutical companies is one of the most important strategies of the company. So from these slides, you could see that you know, uh, since 2010, we started collaborations with uh, global top tier pharmaceutical companies regarding you know, uh, their different drugs uh, for different cancer patients using different CDX developed by Amoy. So you can see that you know, such collaborations is not only a stay in China and we start you know, expanding these collaborations globally, including other markets or territories, for example, Japan, Korea, Europe, even United States of America. So our idea or strategy is that we want to globalize these collaborations and make sure that you know the more patients could be benefit for both the CDX but also uh, the, the, the the new therapies uh, globally. So regarding uh, the Amoy NGS portfolio, you can see that uh, all the NGS uh, assays from Amoy could be classified into three groups. The first one uh, is for targeted therapy. So we have a central panel uh, containing 10 genes. We have a bit, bit bigger panel, classic, uh, which contains 14 genes, but we also have a, a little bit, bit bigger panel, comprehensive, which contains 116 genes. And the second part, or second group, is the panels for pop inhibitor therapies, for example, the BRCA1 
one two panel, the HRR panel, but also the HRD panel, uh, which I will, you know, uh, focus today in the later uh, slides. In a third uh, group, we have a huge panel we call master panel. It contains both DNA and RNA components. So for the DNA, it covers uh, 571 genes, but for the RNA part, it, it contains more than 2,600 genes. So the master panel and the comprehensive panel are still in the, you know, uh, stay in our R&D pipeline. So we plan to launch both of them before the end of this year, but for other panels, it's already uh, like there. Um, be aware that you know four panels also could use liquid biopsy as an input sample. So it could be interesting uh, for the labs or you know the doctors using liquid biopsy. There are different types of the DNA damages. For example, uh, single strand break (SSB) uh, and like double strand break uh, (DSB). In healthy cells, um, SSB could be repaired by enzyme pop, and DSB could be repaired by pathway like homologous recombination repair. And we could also see that you know the genes like BRAC1, BRAC2 plays a critical role in this pathway. However, in the you know in the in the, in the individuals with the homologous recombination deficiency or HRD, uh, the cells cannot repair the DSB effectively by themselves. That's the main reason that you know uh, the PROP inhibitor could be considered as a tumor therapy uh, because it can trap the PARP from the SSB sites on the DNA to prevent you know the impairments of those single strand breaks. So as a consequence there will be more double strand uh, breaks be generated which cannot be you know fixed uh, effectively by the tumor cells, you know, uh, with HRD. There are also uh, multiple uh, reasons or factors which can cause HRD. For example, both germline or somatic mutations of BRAC1, BRAC2 genes, the genetic, genetic mutations, the promoter methylations, or other undetermined causes. So the tumor with HRD cannot fix, uh, you know, the system under the sustaining damage which can, uh, you know, lead to the genomic instability. Um, as you can see that, you know, the mechanism or the cause of HRD is quite com complicated. So normally it's need like multiple uh, methods uh, to define or to detect the HRD status. Um, that's why it's very difficult to uh, define that if a tumor has HRD or not. Also, uh, there are many DNA, you know, repair pathway alterations uh, shows to be, um, you know, uh, approved to be associated with the HRD. And based on the data from publication, uh, it shows that, you know, around 15% of the epithelial ovarian cancer uh, exhibit the HRD uh, due to the genetic and epigenetic alterations of the HR pathway. So that's why, you know, um, HRD is an important therapeutic target in the epithelial ovarian cancer um, uh, as uh, demonstrated by the efficiency of vaccine analogs and pop inhibitor therapies. So in a phase three of a polar uh, one study, uh, it evaluated the maintenance, uh, you know, the therapy under pop inhibitor therapy compared to, you know, uh, the, the placebo. Uh, in the ovarian cancer with the advanced, uh, you know, ovarian cancer. Um, then you can see as a result shows that, you know, the HRD positive ovarian cancer patients, um, you know, uh, has significantly longer uh, PFS comparing to patients receiving the placebo. And you can see that also uh, in this study, almost 29% of the population uh, carry, you know, BRAC1, BRAC2 genes. However, almost half of all the population carry the HRD or they are HRD positive, which means that besides the BRCA genes, the additional biomarkers um, for HRD status could bring or could engage almost 20% of the extra patients who had a substantial benefit from the, you know, from the public inhibitor therapy. Um, next, you know, FDA also approved multiple public inhibitor drugs 
and also the CDX biomarkers for different cancers, including breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, but also pancreatic cancer. For ovarian cancer, uh, multiple drugs has been approved, including olaprib, and irreprib, reshepib, and uh, perisoprapib. But you can see that only you know the CDX of olaprib uh, contains you know the, the biomarkers from both BRCA genes, but also the additional biomarkers for HRD status calculation. In the you know in the 2021 version of NCC and guideline, it mentioned that in the of BRCA1 to mutation, homologous recombination status may provide information on the magnitude of benefit of PARP inhibitor therapy. Which, which indicate that you know besides the BRAC1, BRAC2 genes, um, you know uh, the additional biomarkers for HRD status could you know uh, identify more patients who need the pop inhibitor therapy. However, uh, there are still some challenges for clinical practice for this uh, therapy. For example, BRAC testing is not sufficient to engage enough patients who need or who may benefit from this therapy. As you already see in, in the slides uh, of uh, uh, Polar Polar One study, you can see that you know uh, only 29% of the patients have the BRCA mutations. But if we consider you know the extra biomarkers to calculate the HRD status, then we can increase this number to 15%. Approved or have been approved for HRD positive patients in ovarian cancer, for example, oreprip and irreprip. However, you know, the patient test testing rate is not that high. Um, one of the main reasons is that, you know, the, the approved uh, CDX method is under or its own kind of centralized model, which means, you know, the patients or the clinicians uh, who want to have these tests, they have to send out their samples outside of the country to the centralized labs uh, for the testing. Uh, as a result, you know, it, it will have a very long term of time, uh, but also high cost, which definitely, you know, limited the accessibility of this uh, clinical HRD testing. So in order to resolve such challenge, uh, Amore developed our HRD focus panel, uh, which could be operated locally with quite low term of time, uh, but also, I mean, affordable cost. Um, from you know the designing perspective, so uh, this panel contains two parts. The first part is the target regions of the you know BRAC1, BRAC2 genes, uh, as many other vendors did. So um, yeah, we can you know detect the single SNP mutations or indels as biomarker in those regions. Um, so all the variants in the BRAC genes could be uh, integrated according to ACMG guidelines. Uh, they could be classified into five classes and only the variants drop in into uh, either class five pathogenic variant or class four likely pathogenic variant could be considered as a, you know the positive result um, for the BRCA tests. The second part is our GSS score. So we designed the probes to capture almost 24,000 SNPs which are evenly distributed on whole human genome. So these SNPs could be used to calculate the genome SCAR score, uh, which is kind of additional uh, you know, biomarker to decide if it's uh, HRD positive or negative. So finally, you know, uh, the, the final positive HRD testing result could be uh, considered uh, by either the presence of pathogenic or likely pathogenic variants in the graphic genes, or the positive uh, GSS uh, score from our aggregate. So as you see that, you know, the GSS score or GSS aggregate is the way we calculate, uh, you know, the HRD status besides the BRAC, uh, BRAC mutations. Um, so a few months ago, uh, Amoy has submitted a uh, poster uh, regarding the GSS to Association, uh, American Association of the Cancer Research Congress. And you can see from the you know the screenshot of this poster that you know our GSS algorithm uh, is using quite complicated formula uh, with different weights and all the uh, chromosomal variants uh, or, or uh, yeah 
uh, copy number variations um, are classified into three different groups. Depends uh, according to the lens, the type, and the size of copy numbers. So um, all the features will be uh, used to generate the uh, our GS model for the HRD status calculation using machine learning uh, algorithms. So that's why uh, we use some uh, you know training samples, training data to uh, feed this model. Um, based on the you know this study, it also proved that you know our GSS algorithm is highly uh, correlevant to uh, the operations in the BRAC genes, but also other genes in the you know HR pathway. Uh, in this study, you know there are two groups of the samples are used, and the first group is that we have uh, 18 to uh, you know BRAC deficient samples. So BRAC deficient could be defined as the, the samples with uh, you know BRAC1 or 2 mutations and or uh, with the BRAC1 uh, isolation and the second group is the you know the BRAC um, you know uh, intact samples which are you know uh, 98 samples so those are the samples of patients I, I mean with the uh, relatively stable genome and we can see that in this case our GSS algorithm can identify almost majority of these uh, BRAC deficient uh, samples, which shows quite high sensitivity. Um, and also, you know, all the patients are treated by uh, cystatin-based chemotherapy, and we could see that, you know, the group with uh, GSS positive score have significant longer progression-free survival than the GSS negative group. Moreover, you know, we are using a, uh, technology called candle technology for the design of this panel so the handle system is a uh, kind of advanced version of the MIP technology and uh, the design of the linear probe is quite uh, straightforward and you can see that there are two regions uh, which are homologous to the human dna uh, one we call them uh, we call it like extension arm and the other one is ligation arm and between them it's a region for sequencing primer and which in also including uh, the two UID uh, region. So UID stands for unique molecular identifier, so which could be used for low frequency mutation uh, detection uh, in the future. Um, another, you know, um, you know, another kind of the uh, feature is that if you see the, you know, the coverage of those probes, you can see that they, although um, you know, the single probe cannot cover a very long region, but we can design multiple uh, probes for uh, both plus and minus strand of the DNA to cover the whole regions of, uh, you know, uh, interests. And so regarding the, the procedure or protocol, uh, it's also quite simple. So the linear probe, first it will uh, hybridize to the targeted DNA um, by, you know, these two homologous regions or, you know, ligation extension arms. And then, you know, the gap between these two arms will be filled by PCR reaction stimulated by DNA polymers. And as a consequence, a circulated, you know, products will be generated. And then those linear DNA will be digested. Um, those linear DNA, including, you know, double-strand DNA, a single-strand DNA, or the remained, uh, you know, linear probes, and they will be digested by exon nucleus. And finally, you know, a specific primer will be introduced to amplify the target regions. This primer, including, uh, you know, the, the sample indexes for sequencing to distinguish different samples, but it's also including the UID, uh, which will be helpful for, for accurate, uh, you know, uh, low frequency somatic mutation detection. So finally, these PCR products could be used as a, as a you know, the NGS library, which will be loaded on the Lumina flow cell for the sequencing. Um, so I might also provide the right match solutions for this case, and you can see that you know um, this uh, server uh, we provide Ender server uh, which uh, has this right match solution uh, uh, installed. It. Um, so regarding the bioinformatics right solutions, is including both you know general method uh, or general uh, bioinformatics right data analysis for NGS like this mapping or you know. Uh, or stick calling, you know, variant calling, but also including the annotation part using different public database. Um, this uh, data analysis system or service uh, 
quite user friendly, which means that you don't need a bioinformatician to run this, uh, you know, data part. So the, the pathologists or clinicians can run the data analysis by themselves. And also because it's kind of inside uh, in in house solution, will be helpful for your data security. So this is the high level of the workflow of this uh, HRD uh, panel. So you know, in day one, you know, you need about five hours for DNA extraction, and in day one or day two, you could do the library construction just in five hours with only one hour as of time, and then you could start sequencing um, in day two to day three, and in last date, you just need like around one hour for the data analysis using our Ender server, and then you, uh, the local lab can generate report by themselves. So you can see that, you know, from sample to the report in optimal situations, you just need like uh, three days. So which is, which is very uh, short comparing to those approved CDX, centralized CDX method. So here are some, you know, specifications of these tests. For example, the target size of the panel is around like 1.5 megabytes. Uh, the biomarker we used uh, contains both, you know, the, the variations or creations in BRAC1, BRAC2 genes, including uh, SNPs or indels, uh, but also, you know, the GSS score calculated based on the 24,000 SNPs uh, in our assay. And FFP t-shirt can be used as the input of this uh, panel. Um, so uh, we, we, we sought optimal input of the DNA is 100 nanogram, but if you have a limited amount of the DNA as input, uh, the, we suggest the minimum amount of input, DNA input is 15 nanogram. And it can detect 5% of the allylic frequency of the SNPs or the indels. And, uh, uh, and you could see that, you know, two aluminum, aluminum machines could be used uh, to run this assay. So one of them is aluminum XT500. Another one is Nomasic 6000. So it really depends on that, you know, how many samples, how many patients you have every day or a week, and what is the throughput you need. So last but not least, so um, because of the handle system, we are able to compress the turnaround time for library pack just in one, uh, just in five hours, with only one hands-on, uh, one hour hands-on time, and also again from sample to the result in the optimal situation, uh, the lab just need three days. So um, here is just like high level summary of the main benefits and advantages. So you could see that, you know, uh, HRD focus panel is kind of quick and easy to use uh, assay in the local lab and it can be operated locally. Um, so um, it's, yeah, of course it's CIVD uh, certificated and it can provide accurate, uh, you know, HRD status before the bioperhibitory therapy using both BRAC1 to mutations, but also uh, the genomic SCAR score uh, to define the HRD positive and negative. It's using, you know, uh, handle technology, which can uh, make, make the library pack, uh, you know, turn on time very short, just five hours. But also, uh, you know, we provide the endo system with bioinformatics solution in-house uh, with, you know, very user-friendly interface so the, the college can uh, to the analysis by themselves. Um, the second thing uh, I think is uh, very important because of the local operation, uh, because of the you know, easy uh, uh, op operation of the kits. That's why we could compress the turnaround time of the test in three days. So, which which kind of the you know could benefit to many patients who uh, really need this report in short time, and of course it's kind of the cost effective. So. Um, as a short summary, so this uh, this uh, these kids really resolved the issue or challenge that you know um, it's not easy to uh, access such HRD testing uh, locally uh, with short turnaround time, and also these tests including you know uh, additional uh, biomarkers besides BRAC mutations, which could identify more patients who could be benefit from the you know the pubcubitor therapy. 
So thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, you can write them up in the Q&A session uh, at the end of this uh, webinar. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Xiang Yu, for the nice presentation. But now I would like to present the next speaker, which is Dr. Pantelis Konsatulakis. He is the scientific director of Genotipos Science Labs. I think this is the biggest private molecular diagnostic center in Athens, in Greece. And he used many of the Amoy kits and has a lot of experience. And I'm happy that he is now able to give a presentation on his first experience with the HID kit in Greece. Pantelis, please. Yes, hello, everybody. Here I am. Thank you so much for, for inviting me in this um, very nice uh, webinar. Uh, it's, it's, it's really good to share your experience with other people that might be interested to apply it. And I'm proud, actually, that um, Amoy has chosen me to, to present this data. I have um, not much experience. The last couple, maybe six, five, six months, I'm using HRD focus panel, but I've been using uh, Amoy's product since a uh, couple of years ago. And um, the truth is, any, any any product I've used up to now, I was very satisfied. And I was really very keen when I saw in the American Association of Cancer Research uh, the way that uh, they calculated GSS score the genomic, um, let's call it scarring score, it, it was really brilliant. So it, that captures me a lot. And I'm, I'm, I'm really proud that uh, I, I could use this uh, product and I think I'm using it well. So let me let me go th take you uh, through my, my slides. Oh, there we are. I have nothing to disclose other than the fact that I'm using um, different Amois uh, kits. So as uh, Matthias said, and thank you very much for that, we are actually the biggest private molecular diagnosis center in Athens, or we believe we are. And we specialized in clinical genetics and cytogenetics since 2004. Now, what separates us, I think, from other um, diagnosis centers like ours is the quality. The quality management is our first priority. So we have all the ISOs available and we are fully insured and we are GDPR compliant, so you name it, we have it. And that's actually the reason that uh, several pharma companies has, have approached us and, and, and uh, they are using us as a clinical companion uh, laboratory to do their clinical studies. Uh, some glimpse in our uh, quality standards. And you know, uh, what I'm really proud of though is not only the accreditations, but it's, uh, it's this thing. And I keep showing that, um, despite the fact that it's in Greek most of it, and it's a couple of years old actually, it's all the external quality schemes that we take part. And there's so many that uh, I'm really surprised myself sometimes how we have time to go through all these tests, which is actually comes every week or so, we have to, test, to, 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 to run an external quality, quality test. So we do that because we want to be sure that what we do and what we apply, we apply it in the right way. And it's too, too bad that there is no external quality scheme for HRV yet, but um, I think very soon it's going to happen. As, uh, as soon as uh, Amoy distributes uh, this, uh, this very good panel all over the world, I think uh, uh, UK NECAS or I don't know if you get CMD, somebody will ask, uh, will, uh, will um, try to do a quality scheme for HRD. So anyway, um, we, we do have the appropriate infrastructure in order to run NGS applications and we are very keen in using the best things uh, in, in the market. Uh, from DNA isolation to library preparation to NGS uh, sequencing and of course I, our, our uh, recent pri um, uh, companion which is Amoy DX and uh, Amoy uh, server which is very very actually useful. Now the last um, years that we've been running since 2004 or 5 that we started NGS uh, applications in our lab we run thousands of different applications but Today, I'm going to focus to HRD panel, and we've run uh, like a little more than 150 tests up to now. And it's been, as I told you, like five or six months that we're running that. And now the demand is keep increasing, which is uh, makes sense, actually, because uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Rao, for doing all this 
difficult work for me, uh, introducing the reason why somebody has to look to HRD. So actually the reason is not very well known because there are many, many causes for HRD and we know just a few of them. We know BRCA, BRCA1 and 2 mutations. We know the mutations in some other genes that can cause um, a genomic uh, uh, scarring or um, HRD. We know some promoter methylation that can, can cause it, but most of the causes are undetermined, as uh, Dr. Uh, Rao said. But all of them have the same result, the same effect inability to repair DNA to the cell, genomic instability, and there is where the opportunity comes um, with, with uh, the PARP inhibitors and uh, we can kill this specific cell, which is a cancer cell, and, and um, uh, have uh, extend the survival of the patient. Up to the moment we are talking, there are, un there are only three ways to measure this uh, um, homologous recombination deficiency on, on, on cancer cells. And this is uh, Myriad's uh, My Choice, Ross's Foundation One Choice, and Amois HRD uh, Focus Panel. Let, let me compare them or try to compare them next to each other. As you see, only, only a moist test is the one that the laboratory can use at the moment. And it has to be an experienced MGS lab, but uh, it's the only kit that at the moment exists and can use it, uh, and the laboratory can use. The other test services, as uh, Dr. Rao said, so that means that somebody has to send the sample there. Uh, they all are focusing on ovarian cancer at the moment, and the variants they're detecting are approximately the same. Foundations uh, focus uh, panel actually detects only BRCA1 and 2 mutations and the loss of heterozygosity. Uh, Myriads detects the same thing with BRCA1 and 2, but also genomic instability score, as they call it, which comes out of uh, loss of heterozygosity, large scale transitions, and telomeric allele imbalance. And something similar is what uh, AMOIS uh, focus panel detects. BRCA1 and 2 mutations, but also genomic scar score. The algorithm is different, but basically uh, they, they are detecting the same uh, 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 reasons for genomic instability. And actually, studies that I've seen, uh, they have shown a, a big similarity between the, the results of the two scoring systems. Tumor tissue is what we all detect. Uh, a capsule technology for the other two uh, techniques. Handle, which is, I think, it's, it's an evolution of capsule technology. Handle technique for a moist uh, HRT panel. Uh, the, the concentration of DNA is approximately the same. Uh, a moist uh, suggesting more than 50 nanograms. We've worked up actually with less than that, and we got some good results. But it's it's risky. It's really risky. So 50 nanograms is a very good um, a cutoff point that we have to keep in mind. And the time, the time actually uh, that the kit demands, it might be three days, but the actual time that you need from the beginning that the sample comes in the lab until you give the test result to the physician is probably between five and 10 days. In our hands, we, we have uh, tried and we succeeded five days, but mostly it's like seven to eight, sometimes 10 days at the most. Now, the procedure is very simple. First, you identify and verify the completeness of the, of the test. All this take time. That's why it's not just three days, right? Uh, then you cut some sections of, from the FFP uh, um, block and you send it to the pathology department. The pathologists have to look at the, uh, at the slides and tell you that there is tumor present. We had a couple of cases that there was no tumor whatsoever on the FFP block, probably was sent a, a, a wrong block to us, and that the tumor content is more than 30%. Now, if you had this information on hand when you started, it would be much easier, much faster, but usually we don't have this information. So tumor content at least 30%. We have worked with less than that, but we don't really like it because you want to have a certain result. Then the steps are very simple and very used for, for a lab. Uh, Deparaffinization, DNA extraction, uh, and then you measure the concentration of the DNA. This is the second quality step. Absolutely important that you have to have enough DNA. This was actually, as I, I will show you later on, the main reason of, of, of failures in our hands. We did not have enough DNA. Despite the fact we had a lot of tissue, 
we had a big block of FFP block with a lot of tissue. When you cut slices and you measure the DNA, the DNA is not there. And there are many reasons for that, I will tell you in a moment. Then you follow the very simple SOP by AMOIDX with the steps as Dr. Rao uh, explained. And this is the third and last quality control step. Uh, when you run the, the library size has to be between 230 and 330 base pairs. In our hands, it usually is 240 to 250 base pairs. And once you have this very good size uh, library, then you can load on, on your Nexic. We are using Nexic. We actually changed a little bit the protocol because we found that 1.4 picomolar of, of library is better. It works better for us and 5% phi x. And then you run the sequencing and you're ready for the analysis. Once the sequencing is complete, then uh, you load the files to the address uh, bioinformatics system that uh, Amoy has provided us. And then you look for the QC standards. If these are met, and what I mean I met, if you have Q30 score more than 75%, you have a coverage of more than 98%, you have a uniformity of, of the BRCA region more than 95%, a mean effective depth of reading of BRCA region more than 400x, a uniformity in the SNPs region that Dr. Rao explained more than 90%, and the mean effective depth of uh, the SNPs region more than 200 x if you have this completed, then you can go ahead and do the clinical interpretation. Uh, and, and we have four geneticists started actually that they do that. I, I see the results at the end and we write the report. Now, extremely important steps for the labs that uh, want to use this, uh, this kit is that uh, uh, FFP tissues cannot be old. This is something from the SOP of, uh, of uh, uh, a moist uh, uh, panel. And as you see, they suggest that the FFP should not stay more than 24 hours in, in formaldehyde. This is something we cannot control as a laboratory, but unfortunately is very is critical, is very, very important. Uh, again, uh, the tumor cell content should be more than 30%, as I said before. Now, another se step we cannot control that it looks to be critical is the FFP tissue cannot be uh, older than a, a year old. This is critical. We've seen uh, some cases with older FFPs uh, not to work and with the more recent uh, blocks to work perfectly well. And again, what I, I said before, that you have to have more than 50 nanograms of DNA. We, we tried to, to play with less than that. We had success, but not all the time. Now, once you have this satisfied, look how simple it is to, to see the results. I mean, it's, it's, it's so simple. You check the quality control um, uh, steps. Q30, more, as I said, more than 75% check. Uh, BRCA effective um, depth, more than 400x check. Uh, SNP effective depth, depth, more than 200x check. And then you look here and here. This is the significance level of the BRCA1 and 2 mutations that the system has uh, recognized. And if it's uh, from 1 to 3, uh, it's, it's benign, uh, likely benign, and uh, a VUS, uh, uncertain significance. And 4 and 5 levels are the ones that you have to be careful of. And this is the GSS score. If it's more than 50, it's positive. If it's less, less than 50, it's negative. And this is another sample. You check the quality. Uh, um, standards and they're fine. Uh, the significant level is five. Once you open the file, you see that in fact there is a pathogenic mutation in BRCA1 or 2 gene. This is score negative. This is a, a sample that uh, could qualify for PARP inhibitor uh, treatment. And this is another um, uh, sample. Uh, again, you check the quality measurements and they are fine. Significant level of the mutation is one, it's benign mutation, but this score is positive. Again, another positive sample. It's very simple. It's really, really simple and fast. This is our experience so far. Actually, it changed a little bit the last few days, but this is the experience so far. I want you to check uh, uh, carefully the, the number. The number 48.8 is something that we expected, actually, for ovary cancer. But what, what you see from our result is that if somebody had checked only BRCA1 and 2 mutation, you will get a 9 to 10% um, and positivity rate. Now, 
he, one would have lost most more than half of the cases if you're not taking in account the, the GSS score. So it's critical when we want to, to be sure that uh, PARP inhibitors will work for the patient to check not only the mutations of BRCA1 and 2 um, genes, but also the scarring score, uh, the instability, the genomic instability that um, HRD focus panel offers us. And this is uh, our failure rates. This is uh, sad, but it does happen. And it happens, uh, thank God, only to 6 7% of the, of the cases. And usually, in most of the cases, I think more than 98%, it's low DNA input. It's uh, what I told you before, that we had uh, uh, 20 nanograms, we had 25 nanograms, and we said, oh my God, what should we do? So we continue, and we didn't get good results, so it was this 6 7% failure. And I think it was one or two cases that they, they, there was no uh, tumor whatsoever in the block. The RCA actually uh, blocks, FFP blocks a higher um, uh, failure rate. That's because they were very, very old, much older than HRP, uh, FFP uh, blocks. Um, the test procedure and the sample requirements are something that my lab sends to all the collaborators. We, we give detailed directions how you sample the test, how, how you collect the blood, how you collect the cytology specimens and, and you put them together to mail it to us. We send a sample requisition form with all the information that we need in order to run the test. Very, very simple and easy to fill, but very important as well. And this is the, the report, actually, a sample of our report. In the first page, we, we, we uh, give some patient information and the sample information just to verify it's the right sample. A very, very um, a small summary of the test uh, of the method uh, that we, we followed and the results. So with a glimpse, one can see that this specific sample uh, had a positive um, pathogenic mutation in BRCA1 one gene, and also the HRD status was positive. Uh, uh, that means that PARP uh, inhibitors are approved. In the second page, we have details for the mutation, for the variant that we um, analyzed, that we detected. Uh, one can find the literature here, and also you can find the, the drugs that they are approved for the specific uh, mutation. And again, uh, for HRD score, the, the approved drugs uh, for, for uh, PARP inhibitor therapy. And in the third page, there is an appendix with all the details of uh, the method that was used and the references. Now, let me finish up my, my little and, and fast uh, presentation by giving you an example, a paradigm, a, a, a parallel. If somebody had to buy a good car, and these are excellent cars, right? We have to admit that. These are great cars. But one needs two main things. One, the right fuel and the right driver, all right? Because I don't think everybody, everyone from us can drive these very, very good cars. Now, for right fuel, what I have to say, unfortunately, this is uh, the, the pre-analytical phase. This is something that uh, the lab like ours does not control. Um, it's usually FFP samples, talking for HRD, it's only FFP samples, and in a very rare situation, they're uh, cytology specimens. And look how many steps can go wrong and, and can give you false uh, negative results, because I think that's where this leads to, false negative results. First of all, before the tissue fixation factors, like what type of anesthesia was used, the duration, the tissue damage due to ano anoxia, conditions before fixation. I mean, we had the surgeon that left it uh, outside for the whole night, and then next morning he remembered to put formaldehyde in there. Um, factors during the fixation like what was exactly the fixative, uh, what was the pH of the fixative, uh, how long it stayed in the fixative. As I told you before, Amoy suggested less than 24 hours. Ideally, that will be the best. Unfortunately, we cannot control that. And again, other things like osmolarity, concentration, etc. And, and, and factors after the fixation. Uh, the storage should be less than 12 months. Unfortunately, this is not the case, especially for other tissues like prostate tissue. And, and, and again, where it was stored. Uh, some, some kind, sometimes the tissues come to us and they are completely melted. Now, this is not helping for good DNA material. So that was the fuel. Let's talk a little bit about the driver. I think we have the best drivers available, right? Or I have to talk with my house, with the best thing, the best way, 
we are nine of us that we we uh, we take part in this story and i think we are we are handling the, the situation very very well and let's talk a little bit about the best car in finnish with that i think we have the best car i think uh, hrd uh, amois hrd focus focus panel is a great solution uh, up to now i have no complaints whatsoever about this test uh, the, the the whole procedure is uh, runs smoothly it has very robust um, uh, uh, design so if something is not very well done because of uh, a mistake in one point actually forgot to add the water in the pcr reaction actually it worked and it worked great without water honestly it worked so it's very very robust situation and i have to admit that and one last slide that i'm proud of this is my ngs room I have to real you have to realize that once you are in business like that you need two of it two my six two next six actually a third one that i'm trying right now optical genome mapping doesn't have anything to do with our discussion but two of it because instruments even the best instruments like illuminas break down and you cannot have the oncologist or the patient wait until uh, a week or two for the, the instrument to be repaired and i had this happen to my lab several times instruments do break down so that's why we have two of, of each and i do thank you so much for your time and i'm open for any question at, at any time um, uh, as, as as it follows okay thank you very much pantelis 